Hey, Hickok 45, guess what I've got? An FNP 45 Tactical. Got my hands on one. I've had quite a few requests to look at more FNs and uh, almost any FNs. We don't have much with FNs at all. And we've got a nice one here. This is the uh, one that the FN submitted for the, the U.S. trials that were supposed to have taken place. I think all that got shelved uh, for a while, and they decided not to look at uh, a new pistol for the U.S. military, perhaps, for a while. But uh, this is the, the reason this one was developed, as I understand, and it is a fine gun. It's in 45 ACP. It is called Tactical because it is rather tactical. You've got uh, all the stuff that uh, most of us would consider very tactical. You can even put a uh, red dot sight on very easily and uh, we'll talk about that. You've even got a threaded barrel. You know, you got the extension ready for a silencer, which we had one. Uh, that's standard, comes with it. it uh, let's put it, take it over here and take a look on the table. It's, uh, it's, it is clear, but it has uh, everything virtually is ambidextrous. You know, your mag release, your decocker, uh, slide lock controls. It's uh, you can be a lefty with this gun and uh, and uh, not even notice it. It's a uh, it's a dandy. It's a dandy. Let me show you the other side, just to prove I was telling you the truth. So you've got all your controls on either side of it. Pretty cool. It has a stainless slide, I think, a stainless barrel, and uh, this one is in the flat dark earth. Now apparently they didn't get this earth from Tennessee. It had a little more red in it. But that's what they call it, flat dark earth. And it's pretty attractive. I favor black guns, uh, you know, in these polymer wonders myself, I think. But I, this is fairly attractive. That's a neat color. A little butterscotchy. Makes me hungry. Uh, it is double single action. And uh, that is what you get with it, of course. And we're going to shoot it and see if I can hit anything with it, of course. FN, though, what a name in firearms. Uh, I, I really have been remiss in not doing more with them. Because, boy, when you think of FN, you think of quality. You know, history, I think they go back to like 1889 or so. And, of course, the history with John Browning. Uh, you know, just so many fine firearms have come out of uh, FN and, uh, and, and are still coming out. You know, I don't even know how many uh, that our military uses right now that, were, that are FN firearms. There's several. And they are very well reliable, very reliable and well respected. They work. They really do, and uh, I would expect this gun to work. It's a, it's a dandy. Now, let me a couple of things before we shoot it here. It's got a nice grip, has replaceable back straps. You know, that's the kind of the coming thing. If you don't have that on a new gun these days, uh, you're behind the times, aren't you? So you can replace that with a little fatter, uh, you know, grip there and that kind of thing. Uh, also, very interesting. This one has a red dot on it, and there are several red dots made for this gun. As I understand that will fit the way this one does and you can look down the sights and you can use the red dot and the iron sights basically at the same time uh, they call that co-witness where uh, they're they're all aligned at the same point of impact pretty interesting uh, so you can just leave the red dot on there and turn it off and just look through it using the regular iron sights and by the way it has of course Trijicon uh, high profile you know, sights on it, uh, night sights to begin with, it comes with that. does not come with a red dot, but uh, that's an aftermarket one here that uh, the fellow put on it. It's, uh, I think there are a couple hundred bucks for that one. It's a Trijicon also, the, the red dot sight is. So it's quite a setup. And you know, once of these I've seen that people actually own, I know a lot of people actually put that on there. And when you buy this gun, the, uh, the slide, it has like a little cover there that fits flush with the top of the slide. And I think you take a couple of screws off and the, the trigic or whatever kind of uh, red dot you put on it, it fits down in there so that it does align with the, uh, the high profile sights, iron sights. So that way, you know, it's all in alignment and uh, it's pretty, pretty cool gun. FNP 45 Tactical has the rail, of course. And uh, this, I would say, if, if the military does reopen those trials and pursue looking at another firearm in 45 you know, I don't know uh, how this one would uh, would not at least compete pretty well uh, so you know it's, it's just a nice gun double action to single action okay let's still look at the decocker too it's pretty cool one control and uh, you're on safe I noticed that when it's on safe you still work the slide 
but the trigger won't pull. That's an interesting feature. There you are off safe. Bang. Okay. You have the gun cocked. Works as a decocker. All right. So all in one control. It's ambidextrous. So this gun can be carried cocked and locked. You know, right there, let's say you've got one in the chamber, which we don't. You could carry that. I don't have a holster specifically for it, but I always pull out my big Glock holster. But uh, I'm carrying cocked and lock. I can pull, pop the safety off my thumb. Bang. Yeah. So that is, uh, that's not bad. Uh, you know, I'm not crazy about double single action. But if it has that capability of uh, carrying cocked and locked, that, that, that gets my attention a little bit better. I like that. Speaking of ammo, these, are, these magazines hold 15 rounds. Can you believe that? 15. I've compared them in size with a Glock, and they're essentially the same size. But somehow, they get 15 in there versus 13 for the Glock 21. So 15 plus 1, not bad. <laughs> it's not a small gun. It's, uh, but it feels good, really feels good. Uh, that uh, the kind of checkering, stippling or whatever, is uh, you get a good grip on that. And uh, it just feels, feels really good. I could, uh, I could enjoy this. In fact, why don't we take a couple of shots? Let's just make sure it shoots. How's that? All right, let's see. I've got lots of alibis because I haven't really shot it, but a few times. Oops, safety off. Let's go on over the hill over the, uh, yeah, let's go over and try the gong a couple times. So we can figure out where to hold. <laughs> All right, I'm playing around shooting too fast, but uh, feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Let's drop the slide and Let's put the safety on again. Yep, works. Let's decock it. That works. Pretty neat. Decock it again. Safety on. Won't shoot. Safety off. Let's do a double action pull here. I like that. I think I figured out where to hold on the gong. Let me try that again. I think I was holding too high initially. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing them around. Feels like the sights are pretty much right on. Pretty good feel. It's got a nice trigger. Does have a nice trigger. Does a job, doesn't it? Nothing like a big old 230 grain slug. Uh, takes care of those tree limbs without any trouble at all. Now, that's all right. I think I could get used to that. Not bad. Make sure the little barrel gizmo stays on there. Generally, when you have a threaded barrel, you want one of those protectors on there. That's mainly just to protect your threads. Uh, you know, and it, uh, to me, it would keep the carbon out of them, you know, so that then when you went to put that on, or if you had a suppressor, you know, you would uh, be able to get it on there and not have the threads all carboned up, like an AR bolt gets or something. So that's pretty interesting. Cocked and locked. Yeah, it's like a 1911, except you have 16 rounds at your disposal. Not bad, not bad. So the FMP 45 Tactical, I kind of like that. It's not bad. So you, it comes with uh, there are three magazines. Again, the old 15 rounds. So that's kind of nice. A lot of guns come with one magazine these days, and uh, in the price wars, that helps, I guess. But this comes with three. Can't argue with that. It doesn't come with a big pile of ammo like that. I'm sorry, uh, but it does uh, come with some other things. I, in fact, I think we had a fourth magazine for this one. I can find it. This is a, a grip protector, I think. Yeah, grip, replaceable grips. This is a pretty neat packet. What the heck is that? I must have been some of the information was in that or, or what? I don't know what that is. This looks like it's threaded. 
whatever it is, doesn't it? Well, let's just put that thing on the barrel and see what we get. Maybe it's some kind of uh, velocity accelerator or something. The guy that lent this to us didn't mention this thing. It's got to have some impact. That's what it is. It probably, yeah, a longer barrel increases the velocity, I would imagine. Because, you know, when you have a longer barrel, you do get more velocity. Fits pretty well, then. Huh. Let's put some ammo in these mags and see what happens. Hmm. Well, whatever it is, I'm sure it'll still work. Uh, so far, I kind of like this gun. We'll see if it uh, shoots well with added velocity. But it uh, should do just fine. Pretty outfit, isn't it? It looks like it uh, was made for it because it's kind of matching there. Uh, beautiful piece of hardware, I'll have to say. Uh, can't argue with the FN. I don't know that they make anything that's not considered really high quality. Maybe it's partly because John Browning was affiliated with them. He got them off on the right foot back in, I guess it was in the 1890s, you know, something like that. But uh, John Browning combined with any firearms company makes for a great combination and some excellence, which they have continued long after John Browning's death. So let's, uh, let's see. I'm anxious to see what that is. Uh, it must not be anything dangerous, or he would have warned us about it, the guy that lent this gun to us. But we'll see if we notice any difference in velocity. If it's a higher velocity mechanism of some sort, it probably will cause it to shoot a little bit higher. So we'll have to deal with that. All right, well, let's see. Well, that's one of the advantages of having a threaded barrel. You can hang gizmos on there. All right, let's see what happens. Get my ears on tight. Okay. Let's see, I don't guess it'll hurt the steel if it increases velocity. Yeah, gotta get that safety off again. Gotta get used to that old Glock guy here. What? Oh, I see. It's a suppressor. I'll be darned. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, it makes the gun quieter. I'll be darned. You never know what's going to happen right here, do you? <laughs> ah, sweet. <laughs> hey, I got that bowling pin, didn't even try. wee <laughs> Oh, cool. There's another joke. <laughs> oh, we're out of ammo again. Well, that's good. It's easy on the ears. Yeah, okay. I know, you get tired of my lame humor, don't you all? Don't you just get tired of it? We knew what we had. It is, by the way, a Silencer Co. Uh, Osprey. It's a 45 Osprey, 45 ACP suppressor, silencer. Okay, and it is uh, a beautiful match for this firearm, isn't it? It uh, really quietens it down. The neat thing about the 45 is it's pretty much subsonic anyway, and uh, you got that big bullet trucking along at uh, relatively low speeds, so it's it's just uh, a beautiful setup for a suppressor. And uh, Again, we thank uh, uh, Eric from uh, North Carolina Silencers, NC Silencer, uh, and we'll give you information in the uh, description for coming by again and bringing such a wonderful toy. How's that for cool? Let's just shoot it some more. I have another magazine, and I won't even put my ears on. Okay, let's see if it changes the point of impact too much to hit things over there. <laughs> I love the sound of it slamming into wood or whatever. I, in fact, I think I'll miss intentionally like I did before. There we go. <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> Is that wonderful or what? <laughs> We're out of ammo. A wonderful sound. Big 230 grain slug slamming into the dirt. We got we got to try that some more, don't we? 
Okay, so yeah, what a ruse. I actually know what that was. And uh, we uh, actually played with it a little bit. And it does change a point of impact some. Of course, these are not designed to be put on a gun and pick off turkey heads at uh, 60 or 70 yards. Uh, they're not designed for that. But uh, you can actually adjust the, a lot of these uh, silencers, suppressors, I've learned. Uh, we'll go into the details, the technical details of it, uh, mainly because I don't even know enough to do that. But uh, I do know that you can adjust them so that, uh, many of them, so that you can get them to where they hit at your line of sight, where your gun normally uh, you know, hits, the point of impact and that sort of thing. So this one, because of the shape of it, as I understand, it's a little bit harder to do that in the way it's made. But you know, one of the cool things about it, if you notice, it, uh, these sights are high profile and uh, you don't have it blocking the sights so, though. Know, as with the, the one I used before uh, in another video on the Glock, uh, the Glock 17 silenced. Uh, I was just kind of using instinct to, to shoot that thing. With well, this one, I can actually see the sights and uh, align them on the target. Again, the suppressor may change point of impact, but at least I can see the sights. So that's always a good start, isn't it? All right, let's sling some more silent lead. Silent lead, it's still tight. Keep wanting to put my ears on. Oh, we got a barrel over there. I forgot, we set that over there just so we could hear these bullets travel quietly across the hillside and hopefully land on it. <laughs> you love that. <laughs> oh, that's neat. It is again, I, I used the analogy of throwing rocks, I think, in an earlier. Uh, silenced the video. It is so much like that. It's like picking up some some gravel and just slinging it and bang, bang. Let's see, we got some water here. Let's try some more of that. <laughs> I love that sound. Yeehaw. <laughs> and here's a can right close. Whoa, that was a clever trick. <laughs> nice. Boom. <laughs> Weird sound. Boom, thud. Neat thing about it is when you miss is it uh, slams it into the dirt and you can hear it. Now, I've got a rag here. See, I actually knew I had one of these, so I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. All right, we've got another magazine. Go pound on that barrel some more. <laughs> really does change the uh, point of impact. I have to hold, uh, it's cons fairly consistent though. I mean, it seems very consistent. I have to hold a little bit to the left uh, in order to hit the barrel. Interesting. Okay, but I know where to hold and I uh, kind of have a feel for it. That is that is pretty cool. Isn't that a, a nice rig in terms of appearance too? Wow. I mean, that's a kind of rig you, you want to show off and the bag and everything. We got to shoot a couple more. Sorry, can't resist. And uh, there's some more of these, these 230 grain slugs. This is just some federal uh, UMC we picked up this week. Uh, picked up about 500 rounds to make sure we had plenty of ammo. And uh, this is kind of the low end Remington. Uh, generally, it works all right in 45. You know, you get some low rounds, low powered rounds sometimes in 9 millimeter, but uh, not too often do you get a bad round in 45. But flat dark earth, that's, that's pretty neat. Uh, the tactical model now, remember, this is the tactical model. Uh, they make a lot of different guns. And uh, every time I feel one, pick one up at the uh, NRA convention, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, you know, I like my striker fired triggers and uh, mechanisms, but I'm always impressed with the way these guns feel. And into just knowing it's an FN, I know it's a quality gun. You know, when you say H&K, SIG, Glock, 
FN and others, you're talking quality, there's no doubt about it. Uh, so it's a matter of whether or not you just happen to like the, the particular model or the features on a gun. You know you got something that's probably made very well and it's going to last and uh, serve you well. Okay. All right, let's try a few more. Well, we got a pizza pan here. We haven't really shot enough. I've got a mag pouch. The FN mag won't mind going into a, well, I don't guess it's a Glock mag pouch. It's just whatever you want to put in it. I tend to use it for Glock magazines. All right. Oh, shooting one handed here. All right. Seems loud, doesn't it? <laughs> See if I can hit a plate. There we go. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. Reloading. Let's go back over there at the gong. Uh, let's see, where do I hold? I guess right there is a good place. Ooh. <laughs> Stirring up dirt. Okay, I'm getting sloppy. Tighten up the suppressor. They do come loose. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's so funny the way it sounds. Slinging it into the wood. I have one more magazine. Oh man, let's make sure it's tight. What should we do? Well, let's, let's do some. Uh, well, I say speed shooting. Let's just sling them out here. Uh, we got some. Uh, you know what? I don't have one more night. But we got some cinder blocks here. I don't want to forget either. Maybe I better load up another one. Even though they're 45s, uh, you know, I'm not sure that they were designed to destroy cinder blocks. So it might take a few extras, and uh, we get at least one of those cinder blocks. Uh, hopefully pulverized or broken apart a little bit. We'll see. Not a 308. It is just a pistol round, the old 45. But uh, it uh, should at least let them know we're here. Let's see what it does. See how it sounds. That's one reason we uh, we set them up there, just uh, because of the silencer, the suppressor, and uh, maybe we can actually hear what it really sounds like: 230 grains of lead slamming into a cinder block. You really don't really hear. You don't hear the impact. You think you do, but we're mostly hearing the sound of the firearm, aren't we? Okay, so we're tight. All right. I'm going to get too close. Hit. No malfunctions yet. Shouldn't have said that, should I? Keep wanting to put my ears on for some reason. <laughs> sweet, sweet. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's empty this uh this last one. A little rapidity here, just for kicks. See up here, I can hit anything. <laughs> oh, that's too much fun! Too much fun. So, we have a little suppressed uh, FNP 45 tactical here. That was a that was a lot of fun, and 
you know, this gun has been out a little while, you know, I think a, a couple of years maybe, or close to it. So it's out there, you know, all the specs are there. We may list some of the other specs on it. But you see the main features it has. You know it's an FN, and uh, it just works, doesn't it? Uh, quality piece of, piece of hardware. If I could get used to the trigger, the double single and all of that, uh, I, I can't think of any negative. That's the only negative really with this firearm. It feels really good. I like the grip a lot. If I could replace every Glock I have with that feel, I'd have no complaints. You know, it, it just feels wonderful. And uh, seems like a, a quality firearm, which I would expect from FM. So, uh, so again, we have uh, Silencer Co. Uh, 45 Osprey uh, Suppressor Silencer. And it's a nice match in color. And I guess in every other way. So pretty quiet too, wasn't it? Pretty quiet. So it was a lot of fun. I'm glad that you guys could come to the range here and be here today with us uh, when we uh, fired this thing. So check the description and uh, maybe some more information on this fine piece of hardware. Life's really good.